I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today I am going to review and give my first impressions of a new to me Bear Yarn Company Indie Dyer. This video is not sponsored, but Indie Dyer did send me some of their Bear Yarn bases for free so that way I could give my impression and review them today. I don't know how many bases they sent me, but I did ask for at least two skeins of each base, so that way I can have one undyed, as some yarns really fluff up, plump up with the dyeing process. It depends on if the mills uh, do like a wet finish at the end, and often mills don't do that because it is cheaper uh, for the dyer to do it themselves. So, but let's take a look. The yarn came wrapped in bubble wrap. I don't think it's really necessary to protect yarn itself with bubble wrap, but it does give extra protection in case the bag that it was shipped in rips or anything like that. So I'm excited. Ooh. It looks like I have a total of 12 different skeins and six different yarn bases here. Because there's so many different yarn bases, I think that I am gonna organize the video with my first impressions of each yarn base followed by the dyeing of that particular base and the finished dry yarn. Um, so that way everything is all together for each of these yarn bases. I don't know which yarn bases Indie Dyer sent me in the end. I went through their website and I remember I listed some contenders, but ultimately asked them to surprise me a little bit. I really liked that you could search their website for fiber content, superwash, not superwash, even the number of plies in the yarn. But I am really excited to see what yarn bases I have to play with. Ooh, first up is Pines. This is a 75% superwash wool, 25% nylon sock yarn. And my first impression is that it was very smooth and soft. I wonder how many plies it is. Okay, it is a three ply sock yarn and it looks like it comes with one, two, three, four, five ties already on it. Um, we'll see if these butterfly ties are a little too tight for the dyeing process. You'll know if they're too tight if you end up with a paler section around them. Normally I don't edit ties when I'm dyeing yarn, but it seems like that's a worthwhile thing to uh, check about. My first impression of this yarn is that I do think it will is one that will fluff up um, and become bouncier with the dyeing process. And right now it has almost a, it's almost like a cottony texture, but it is very soft. Oh, the labels themselves actually say the number there of plies there are. So I went and I looked myself, but that is handy. And now that I'm thinking about it, I think you can search their website based on the number of plies. Rebecca from a few minutes in the future. When I'm giving my first impressions of the yarn, I'm gonna be reading the tags for the fiber content. And a lot of them say superwash wool on them. Um, and if I go to the website, it says that it is superwash merino wool. And so I'm not entirely sure about the discrepancy between what is on the tag for the yarn itself and what is listed on the website. But I did want to throw that out there. And honestly, that is a tiny bit confusing for me. And I'm going to pre-soak all of the yarn in some plain tap water overnight. I'm assuming not all the yarn needs an overnight soak, but there are a few skeins in here and with the fiber content, a longer soak uh, will be beneficial. In my dye pot, I have 16 cups of water and off camera, I dissolved one gram of Dharma's teal grain acid dye in just some hot tap water. I don't know if I've looked at a 1% depth of shade of this color before, which is dyeing 100 grams of yarn with one gram of dye. I'm hoping to reuse these dye baths um, over and over if I can get the colors to clear. Um, and so we are going to start with four tablespoons of white vinegar. And now I'm going to stir things up. I will add that whenever I'm dealing with dry powder to say measure out dye stocks, I'm always wearing a deluxe rubber respirator mask to take the glasses and gloves. And now I'm bringing over our yarn and it's possible that these ties are going to be a little bit tight. I see it holding the yarn in, but we'll see through dyeing if you might want to replace it. Um, so this is 100 grams of pine. And to help distribute the dye around the yarn, I'm not aiming for like a dip dyed effect, but I'm raising and lowering it in 
And yeah, I think those ties may provide some resist, but again, we will see. So I'm now going to leave this for about 30 minutes and we'll check back in to see if we need to add more acid or anything like that. All right, let's see. It has been 30 minutes and our dye bath is clear. I am curious, maybe I see some light patches around the ties, but you know, we'll, we'll take a closer look once things are cool. So I'm gonna remove the yarn and set it aside to cool completely so we can wash it. We are gonna wash everything but the navy yarn here together. And I know I'm showing this, I actually don't know how I'm gonna order this in with the video yet because of the way that I am trying to do one base at a time and show my conclusions. Um, but, so I guess I might be showing this with the first yarn and so it's a little bit of spoiler, some of the colors to come. <laughs> um, but we have another color and the last two I will wash uh, together. But let's see, I just added a little bit of dish soap and I'm not seeing any color bleeding which is great. The four skeins that I'm washing here are Pine, Fluffy, Loop, and Capullo, Capullo. Uh, again, I'm not quite sure if it has a Spanish pronunciation or not. Um, so I'm gonna refill the basin with water and we will see. But yeah, I'm not seeing color come out which is always a nice sign, especially when we had some yarn that had to sit longer to absorb water <laughs> a little longer than the pines. But anyway, I'm gonna go put the yarn through my spin dryer and then hang it up to dry. Teal green is lovely and pigmented and I adore it at a 1% depth of shade. The yarn fluffed up so beautifully in the dyeing process. When Indie Dyer says in their FAQs that the yarn isn't bulked, they mean that it hasn't been like washed after the milling process. And so you can see how the yarn is a little bit more compressed. It's a little thinner uh, from the skein as it's milled. And then it has this gorgeous transformation into this really soft and bouncy yarn. When I dye yarn, I'm not always going for even color coverage. There is a little bit of unevenness uh, within sort of the strands but I really like that effect. I think it comes from how it's sort of like a little bit stretched it and then plumped up when it was drying. It gives this really rich and a lot of depth to the colorway that I do like a lot. Let's take a look at some of these ties. Okay, this one here, okay, I do see a little bit of lightness from that tie, but how about on these more cottony ones? Let's see I'm like trying okay you can see we do have some resist here because the tie was just a little bit too tight now will this be a huge problem for when it comes to knitting with the yarn no but I think that I would recommend with these cotton ties clipping them and adding your own ties on because this one is really tight as well and you can see just with the way that the yarn fluffs up how tight uh, these ties are on the yarn. Before the yarn was dyed, the ties don't necessarily look like they're that tight, but I mean, they were tight enough that I knew to be a little bit concerned. But again, you can see the difference in the plumping, undyed versus dyed with how the yarn just moves around uh, the, the ties. Next up we have Fluffy. Fluffy is a single ply, 75% superwash wool, 25% nylon, super bulky yarn. My first impression is that the fibers feel a little bit dense, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I think there's a reasonable amount of twist in here, which means that we could end up getting some glazing on to this yarn. It looks like that this also has about five butterfly ties on it. Some of them are with, I think, what looks like a cotton thread, and then there are the ends of the yarn tied around itself as well. Fluffy does feel really soft. I mean, I'm not expecting any of the yarn to feel scratchy, but you never know. In this dye bath, I'm starting with 16 cups of water. There are no acid yet. We'll add that in a minute. And I'm gonna add about 90 milliliters of a dye stock that was a custom mixture. And I'm gonna rinse out the rest of both 
the graduated cylinder and the die container into here. This mixture was a combination of Derma Extreme Blue and Fluorescent Fuchsia. It was 80% Extreme Blue, 20% Fluorescent Fuchsia. And so with about 90 milliliters total of this 1% stock solution, we'll have about a 0.9% depth of shade. And here we are rinsing everything out. I picked this dye mixture for the fluffy base for two reasons. One was to leave no dye behind and to use up some dye colors that I had uh, saved in my stash. But the other reason is that this is a mixture that could break. Um, the extreme blue tends to strike faster than the fluorescent fuchsia, so we might see some pink undertones in the yarn. I'm gonna add four tablespoons of white vinegar to the dye pot. And now we're gonna bring over our yarn. Uh, the ties on this one don't feel as tight as they did on pine. Now this color mostly looks very, very blue. I don't think extreme blue is a color that I've tried glazing with. Um, I don't know how fast it really strikes, but since this is a thicker, single ply yarn, there's a chance that more of the blue will strike to the outside and then some of the pink will go more towards the center, giving us some kind of glazed effect, even though I did not set up this pot for glazing specifically. But yeah, I was just curious what we'd get. So I'm gonna let this sit for 30 minutes. I might come stir it occasionally and then We'll check that in. All right, we are very steamy. Let's see how we're doing. I do see some extreme blue around the sides. And yes, we have some pinks in the dye bath, but oh my gosh. Ooh, ooh, I do see a hint. I don't think you'll be able to see it on camera yet, but we're gonna have some pink undertones. This is gonna be really, really pretty. Oh my gosh, I forget the yardage of this yarn. 72 yards per 100 grams, okay. Okay, I am really excited. All right, I am going to give this a little bit more acid. One, two. And then I'm gonna go ahead and leave this on, um, I think, low heat for another 15 minutes, and then I'll check back in. All right, I'm now gonna turn off the heat. The thing with fluorescent fuchsia, and there might be a little bit of blue left in the water too, but the thing with that pink is that it requires sometimes just more time to bind. So I'm gonna leave the yarn in the pot and let things cool off here in the pot for about an hour, at which point I'll go ahead and remove the yarn, even if there is some color left. And it's been a little bit over an hour and the dye in the dye bath has substantially cleared. It's just what this color is known to do. So anyway, I'm gonna set this aside to cool so we can wash it. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and reset the pot so I can clean it. Like the first yarn, Fluffy also has a very dramatic sort of before and after to it um, with just how much the yarn fluffs up. It gives a really dramatic difference in the width in, I guess, the wraps per inch of our yarn. And so I think with all of the Indie Dyer yarn, if you wanted to do any kind of color work, I would recommend giving, I don't know if you would need to apply heat, um, but I would wash, um, certainly pre-soak and wash the, the bare yarn, um, so that way you could get something that is the same as the dyed. Fluffy took up the dye beautifully, and we have this stunning, stunning deep blue. But you'll notice, like, there's there's something about the way that it's spun that feels almost like a boucle or something, but it is single ply because it's not smooth. It's not even necessarily that it's thick and thin either, but it's just, I think, the way that the twist is, it sort of is, almost feels like a twisted ribbon or something. Um, that's not something that I'm used to to seeing with single ply yarn. I'm used to it feeling a little bit more smooth all the way through. And this yarn didn't felt, but it definitely is a little bit like sticky 
to itself, which was a little surprising for a superwash yarn, um, but I just wanted to point that out because it feels almost a bit silkier in the undyed form. Some of the ties were loose enough that they didn't interfere with the dyeing process. This one, oh, and we got a little vegetable matter in there. This one right here was pretty tight and you can see a little bit of the pink that's in the mixture showing through there. Um, it's not the biggest deal in the world. I wish that, um, and I'll, I'll let them know in an email that they would make these ties looser or instruct the mill to make the ties looser or I would just recommend to the customer to clip the ties and add your own. This yarn came in a bag, which maybe this is a bit of a visualization of how bagged yarn might come. And I think I'm gonna have to look up the fiber content. Uh, it does say loop on the plastic bag, but there aren't otherwise hang tags on it. It is very soft though. All right, so loop is 100% merino wool and is a non superwash yarn. It is very soft, I think, is it two ply? Yes, it is two ply and it is a DK weight yarn. The skein is feeling very small to me. I'm curious if it actually is 100 grams. And this skein only seems to have two ties on it, which isn't really a problem to me. I always add a nylon zip tie onto the yarn that I'm dyeing, but I'm not sure because the other ones had more ties. And so I don't know if it's just sample skeins that have additional ties or if all of them do. I'm glad I thought to check this because this seems to be a 50 gram skein of pine versus 100 grams. Well, at least that's consistent with the website because loop is only 50 grams uh, over there as well. But anyway, I'm glad I checked it. I'm actually uh, pretty pleased with myself that I noticed. For loop, I am setting up a fresh dye bath. In here we have 16 cups of water and oh, okay, this was one gram of moss green dye and it turned into a bit of a jelly. Oh, that was weird when I stuck the the spoon and it felt a little bit like jello. Oh, interesting. So I did make an error in that I measured out one gram of our moss green acid dye and not half a gram because loop is only 50 grams, but we're gonna go with it <laughs> and attempt to dye this at a 2% depth of shade, which hopefully will be a beautiful deep green. And the fact that it sort of gelled shouldn't cause too much of an issue. Now, this is non superwash yarn, so it often needs more acid and time for the color to dissolve all the way. So I'm gonna start with six tablespoons of white vinegar, and I'm gonna bring over our yarn, even though the dye bath is still cool. Here is our yarn. Okay, we can see that there are some clumps of dye in here because it, the way that it gelled. So we may end up with some interesting splotches on here, but we'll see. <laughs> Once again, I will come and stir it occasionally in the dye bath, trying to lift the yarn from the zip tie. And I'm going to go ahead and give this one 45 minutes because it is not yet warm, and so it's gonna take a while for the dye bath to come up to temp, and we're gonna to wanna to let it heat for at least 30 minutes. So that's just why we're starting with the 45 minute timer. It's been about an hour, and almost all the color is in our yarn. This is a gorgeous deep green at this depth of shade. Um, I am really happy. And once again, I'm gonna turn off the heat and let the yarn cool for a bit in here uh, to see if we absorb the rest of those blues. If not, it's not a big deal. After maybe a little over 30. Oh no, the zip tie broke. <laughs> oh, that happens rarely. More likely in, to happen in the winter after things have been sitting cold and hot. But um, we're gonna try to put in, we'll put, try to put a new zip tie on before we wash it, but I'm gonna go set it aside so it can cool completely. Loop is the 100% non superwash merino and I am so glad I accidentally used a 2% depth of shade of moss green because this color is stunning. I think this is a color I've been dreaming of and sort of wishing that there was a deep deep green sort of like forest green but more yellow 
And I think that this, this is a proportion and a color that would be great for many applications. Once again, if we compare the undyed yarn to the dyed yarn, uh, you can see that the yarn plumps up with dyeing and it's just absolutely gorgeous. I love how bouncy the yarn is. I love how well it took up color and I'd love to play with this one more in the future. I just took Capullo out of the, the bubble wrap bag and my immediate instinct was to go, ooh, it is super soft, silky, and without checking the fiber content, it's got like a lot of drape to it already. This is a worsted weight, 100% silk yarn. Wow, it is beautiful. It's two ply. Uh, I mean, I knew it was silky. I didn't know it was 100% silk, but I don't know if I've used a worsted weight 100% silk before. This is beautiful, and I think it'll be a lot of fun to dye. Ooh, what color? Oh, I don't know. My plan was to do, and I'll probably kettle dye everything, but oh, that is so pretty. To dye Capullo, I want to use one gram of teal grain acid dye. This is the same color that I used on pine earlier. And the reason why I'm choosing the same dye is that I thought we could do an interesting depth of shade comparison in the end. Because we should see a difference in the color that we see using the same amount of dye on 100% silk as we would on a 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon blend. Plus it's a gorgeous color and I think will be beautiful on Capullo. Although I keep saying Capullo, it could be Capullo. Um, I don't know if it's a Spanish word, and so if I've been mispronouncing it all along, then I apologize. So this was one of the yarn bases, because it's 100% silk, that I thought probably needed to pre-soak overnight, because silk sometimes just needs more time to get well saturated. And I'm bringing it in, moving it around. The dye bath started with 16 cups of water and two tablespoons of white vinegar. And this is the same dye bath that we used for pine. Um, I'm gonna keep an eye on the heat because I don't want it to get too vigorous, but we'll come back in 30 minutes and see if all the color has absorbed. It's possible that we'll need to come and add more acid to help all the color bind. Sometimes silk yarn just takes more time, but we'll see. After 30 minutes in this same dye bath, the water was clear for pine, and it is not for our 100% silk yarn. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna add more acid. I'm gonna add another four tablespoons of white vinegar, and we're gonna heat this for another 30 to 45 minutes uh, just to try to give a chance for the dye to absorb. After another, I guess, 40 minutes, we still have a lot of blues left in here. There's a lot of color in our yarn, but there's a lot of color that also has not absorbed. So what I'm gonna do, because we've already added more acid, is I'm going to turn off the heat and leave the yarn in here to cool completely. Over time, the yarn may absorb more color, or it might not, in which case we might be leaving some behind here in the pot. It has been a couple of hours, and almost all of the dye is now in our yarn. And so I'm gonna go set this aside to cool so we can wash it. I also wanna take a brief moment to show how our 100% silk and our 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon look when both of these are dyed at the same depth of shade. Both of these were dyed with one gram of our teal dye on 100 grams of yarn. It's just the fiber content is different. And so you can see that even now while everything is wet, they both feel reasonably dark. Uh, the wool may be a hair darker, but the hue is slightly different already between them. Now I fully expect that when our silk dries, it's gonna look a lot lighter. So I wanted to show what things looked like now while they were wet, fresh out of the dye pot. So we have this as a uh, mental comparison later. 
the 100% silk yarn soaked up color really, really beautifully. Uh, it looks like this one tie is probably wool, unless it was dark to begin with, but actually we can check that. No, it wasn't. Um, and so this tie definitely soaked up a lot more uh, pigment overall. The tie here, one of them is fairly loose. This one's a little bit tighter. Made a tiny bit of a difference once I moved it. You could see um, a little bit of some resist there. Uh, but because it's butterflied, I don't think it made as big an impact as the ties did on some of the other yarn. Now, I haven't dyed very much 100% silk, but this yarn base is one where I like the undyed version of it a little bit more than the dyed. You can see some areas where, like, the twist kind of got a little bit messed up. Here's another area. They almost feel like they got flattened a little bit. They're a little bit less round. And so I don't know if that's my fault, if it was part of the drying process or what. Um, and so it still has like some shine to it and luster. Um, and so that's nice, but it feels a little bit softer uh, undyed than it does dyed. Maybe I need to just touch it a little bit and play with it because some fibers, think about like when you air dry blue jeans and how they're stiff at first and then after you touch them and let it move around a little bit then it is softer. Um, so it's definitely like softening up but there is a slight, yeah, a slight textural difference and so I'm not sure uh, if that, oh but look at the shine. Ooh, that's pretty. Yeah, so I'm not sure if that's something that I did or what. Uh, the skein got a little bit messy with my dyeing process. You can see uh, that it's not quite as neatly ordered as it was before. I probably should have added some more ties. And I know I didn't do this for all the yarn, but there's not really much shrinkage here. Um, and so I think that this is a base that it is the most similar, except for some of the weird places where it looks less twisted. But again, I don't think I've dyed silk that this thick implies. So if you have tips, let me know in the video description because I have one more skein that I'll be dyeing at some point. Next up is two. <laughs> this is a two ply sock yarn that is 100% superwash wool. I want to check on the website to see if there's just superwash wool or if they are superwash merino. I'm reading what is currently on the little hang tags. Um, this is a soft and smooth yarn. Again, I think it's one that will likely plump a bit and feel a lot fuller once it's dyed. And yeah, I love two ply yarn, so I'm excited to see how this one turns out. And I'm also excited to have a superwash yarn that doesn't have nylon content. Not that nylon is ever really bad, but if you aren't making a lot of socks, if you tend to do more lace work, then you don't necessarily need the added strength of the nylon. And so I'm excited to play around with the superwash fingering weight yarn. We're starting with a fresh dye bath to dye two, the 100% superwash merino wool fingering weight yarn. And I just added 50 milliliters of a 1% stock solution of dark navy. I wanted to go for a 1% depth of shade of this color and have it be a little bit darker, but I'll show you shortly a reason why I decided to go for something that is a little bit less saturated. Um, and that's because we're going to do a comparison later on where I thought a 1%, aiming for a 1% depth of the shade would be a little bit risky. The dye bath is not yet warm and actually I haven't added acid yet either. Let's go ahead and just add four tablespoons of white vinegar. And now I'm going to come in with our yarn. And since things are still cool, we're going to go ahead and wait 45 minutes before we go ahead and I, I guess like come back and check on it. Although I might stir it a few times along the way. And so we'll still get a reasonably dark color with only a 0.5% depth of shade of dark navy. But anyway, I'll see you in about 45 minutes. The timer just went off and I turned off the heat the color has pretty much cleared. There's a hint of some, I don't know, it almost feels a little yellow left in the water, but I'm gonna remove our yarn to cool completely. 
I know I went for a lighter depth of shade of the navy, so that way I could do a comparison that is gonna be really cool, I'll show that at the end. But I also would have loved to have gone a little bit darker here. The half percent depth of shade of dark navy on the two base gives like a warm denim blue jean kind of feel because the yarn did something that was so beautiful. The dye application on here is so shallow it gives this glazed look. Now I don't remember the exact conditions that I used which are probably different from the conditions I typically use when I'm trying to glaze something, but this would be such a good candidate for a lot of different glazed applications. Having plies that are a little bit thicker, a little bit higher twist, uh, work great. And so this two ply yarn would be an excellent candidate for more glazed applications in the future. The ties on two were overall a little bit looser than some on the other bases that we've looked at. So it's possible that it's hit or miss, like how how loose or tight they are on the yarn. With two, we have another really good example of how the yarn just plumped up with the dyeing process. And so that's why you really need to dye yarn, it, sometimes in order to judge it, because the bare yarn just doesn't always have the same kind of like feel of how the finished yarn would look. Another way you can think about the yarn plumping up is to look at the shrinkage in the yarn because the milling process has everything more stretched out. And so once the fibers can sort of relax and settle back in on themselves, you get the, I guess, more shrunken length. Now what I don't know is if the yardage of the yarn indicates like post dyeing or if the yardage is the yarn as it was dyed. I mean, with 370 yards for a sock yarn, my guess it would be after dyed, um, but if you're curious about the yardage, I would recommend reaching out um, to Indie Dyer customer service with questions like that. Oh, this one is really soft. I know I described other yarn as feeling a little bit cottony, but this one definitely feels cottony, and well, it is. <laughs> this is Andy's, it is a sport weight, 85% Pima cotton, 15% baby alpaca yarn. Oh, that's why it's so soft. It feels like it might have like a nice drape to it. I, I'm just so intrigued. I don't think I've ever dyed this type of blend before. I have certainly dyed uh, cellulose wool blends, but I don't think I've ever seen a cotton alpaca blend. So that's really unique. Andy's is a cotton alpaca blend. 85% cotton, 15% alpaca. And we're gonna dye this with acid dyes today. You might think that what I'm doing is a little bit risky, and I suppose it is. It's a little bit risky because the cotton won't take up any of this acid dye. The alpaca will. With 50 milliliters of our 1% stock solution, that's a half gram of dye that won't be dyeing our cotton but might dye, well, will dye the alpaca. But given that we only have 15% alpaca in here, we have enough dye to dye just that fiber over a 3% depth of shade. So I might regret this. I might regret this a lot, but I wanted to do another depth of shade comparison between this and I think two is the other one, the other yarn that I was dyeing a dark navy. And so I think it's very possible that the navy will be able to dye the alpaca that deep of a color. And oh, we need acid. I forgot about acid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tablespoons of white vinegar and 16 cups of water. Uh, now, the very first yarn that I ever dyed was only 20% wool, 80% acrylic. And so that dyed really, really well. And so I'm hoping that we will have something similar here. But what I'm hope, also hoping to show is that for the same amount of dye on 100 grams of yarn, depending on the fiber content and blend, things will look very, very different. And so that's why I wanted to do this comparison, but it's possible that we'll end up with a mega bleeder here, and that'll be entirely my fault, not Indie Dyer's fault. So. <laughs> But I'll be back in about 45 minutes. Things are starting cool, so I want to give things time to heat up. It's been 
45 minutes and something kind of curious happened. Most of the color is in our yarn, but we've got red left in here, which is different from what we've seen <laughs> with the other colors. So I don't know if it's a pigment that's in the navy that just isn't binding or what. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave the yarn in here for a little while. And we already have more acid in here than we did with the two. But I'm gonna add a little bit more vinegar and just let the yarn cool off here in the pot. All right, it has been a bit of time. There's still a little bit of pink in there, but almost all the color is in our yarn. And I'm gonna set it aside so it can finish cooling. But even right now, you can see the depth of shade difference between our 100% Superwash Merino and our 15% Alpaca 85% Cotton Blend. Uh, there's a huge difference, and that little bit of color left in the dye pot would not have made this look any darker. We are gonna wash our two yarns dyed in the navy dye together. And I'm gonna add some dish soap, and let's see. There's a chance we could see some bleeding because there was that little bit of pink left in the one skein, but I'm not seeing anything come out, which is great. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out the soap and then put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. And we'll take a closer look at everything once, again, once everything is dry. And so, you can see that <laughs> the wetter that this gets, the more similar the color actually is. Well, it's really saturated, but even just squeezing the water out of it, it is then so much lighter. <laughs> our cotton blend versus our wool blend. Handy's is the cotton acrylic blend, and it is so, so soft. You can see that the ties on here are definitely made out of wool because they took up so much color. I think after dyeing, it is a little bit softer than it was before. Before it was a little bit smoother, um, which isn't a bad thing, just a slight difference. Like most of the rest, the yarn definitely bloomed in the dyeing process. Sometimes when you dye blends like this, the yarn ends up feeling heathered in the end. Um, and so you can look through and kind of see some strands that have uh, some of the color that you dyed and then some strands that don't. And while this does have dimension to it, I can't exactly pick out, at least from here, where I think like, ooh, that's an alpaca fiber that picked up color. So I don't quite see and feel that. And here are the six skeins of yarn that we dyed using Indie Dyer's yarn bases. Now there are a few things I would like to point out before we go and look at the website and talk about pricing a little bit. Pines and Kapua were both dyed at a 1% depth of shade of teal green. Both of these 100 gram skeins had one gram of teal green dye per 100 grams of yarn. And the visual difference is very striking. It takes way more pigment to dye 100% silk at the same color as what you see on a wool nylon blend. And I think that that's part of just how the dyes are binding to the fibers themselves uh, and just sort of the way that works because they both ended up taking just about all of the dye that we had in the pot. Similarly, we dyed both the Andes and the two at a 0.5% depth of shade of dark navy. And the reason why I went for that lower depth of shade is that I knew that our 15% alpaca, if I was gonna have a whole gram of dye in there, that might be a little bit too much for it to absorb all of that color. And so here, I feel like there's a massive difference, but that's also because the cotton content in here is not able to be dyed. So all of the dye is going on to the alpaca that we have there. And so we have a massive visual difference. These two examples are the reason why I say when you are dealing with depth of shade, you are comparing one color to itself on the same yarn base because the same recipe, the same total amount of dye per quantity of yarn can look vastly different uh, depending on the fiber content. So that fiber content is really important. Now, if you're dealing with a lot of different superwash merino things, it's more likely to be similar. But once you add in silk or cotton, 
you can expect some bigger differences. The website is reasonable to explore. It's nice that you can see the yardage of the yarn when you're going through, but I do wish that when you had a search result that you like this, which is actually just showing everything that's available, I wish that you could see the yarn weight and the fiber content in addition to the price and the yardage. I know the yardage can give a little bit of some helpful information, but if some skeins, since we know at least one is 50 gram and some are 100 grams, it, the yardage itself is not, ooh, oh, I got distracted. The yardage itself is not enough to know the yarn weight. Indie Dyer states in their frequently asked questions that their yarns are not bulked, which is steaming and scouring the yarn to plump the yarn up. Um, they don't do that. That's up for the dyer to do, which is totally fine. And all of the yarn is muesling free. And so that is great. And it also looks like that wholesale is available if you want to place a larger order. It looks like on their website that most of the sample skeins start at $9 and then maybe they go up to 12. And not all of the bases are available as sample skeins. It looks like the full retail price of the 10 packs of yarn range between seven and $10. The five packs are similar. A lot of the prices start at about $7 a skein full price. Some of them are on sale when I'm looking at the website now. Uh, there are a few exceptions, but there seems to be few bases that are above $10 a skein. What is Stardust? Uh, it's a wool cashmere yarn. Let's see, it's 80% wool, 20% cashmere. Okay, and it's a DK weight base. This one is more expensive than some of the others. For each of the six yarn bases, I'm now going to put up the price per skein if you're buying a bag of the bare yarn. The bag might be a 10 pack of yarn, it might be a five pack of yarn, but I divided the total price by the total number of skeins to give the prices that are here on the screen. My two favorite yarn bases are Loop and Two. I think that I'm also drawn to them because they're fairly unique compared to the wool yarn bases I dye a lot. I don't buy a lot of non-superwash wool and I love how bouncy loop is. And then two, again, I, it's more similar to some other things I've dyed, but I just really, really like it. I also really do like pine and Andes. Those two yarn bases are really fun and the Andes is incredibly unique. I haven't seen a yarn base, at least I don't think, quite like it, and so I really, really like those. The Capullo, I like. I love that there's a worsted weight, 100% silk yarn, but I don't like how I dyed it. I mean, I like the color, that's not the problem. I just think that I need to do a little bit more research into dyeing 100% silk yarn. I think dyeing lace weight 100% silk yarn that has a much higher twist to it, that was surprisingly a little bit easier and the yarn turned out really, really well. Um, and so, yeah, I just need to figure out what I did, maybe take a closer look at what I did to this poor yarn. So it's not the yarn's fault. I would consider that more my fault. And then Fluffy has to be my least favorite. It's soft, it's poofy, but something about the way that it's twisted isn't quite what I expected maybe and wasn't what I expected how it would turn out when dyed. Now do I hate it? No, I think that you could knit something really beautiful with it. It's just my least favorite out of these six that I tried. Woo wee! Here we have it, a first look and first impressions of the bear yarn from Indie Dyer. I would like to thank Indie Dyer for sending me this yarn for free so that way I could review it for all of you. Indie Dyer also generously gave me a coupon code to share with all of you. You can save 15% off your IndieDyer.com purchase using the code Chemnitz at checkout. Uh, this coupon code is valid for the first 50 customers and expires on April 16th, 2023. You can redeem this code at checkout, but you do have to register to make an account. Apparently it won't work if you don't have a registered account with Indie Dyer when you try to use it. This isn't an affiliate code, it is just a discount code uh, that you can use through April 16th. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I really hope that you have enjoyed this review and first look 
at the IndieDio.com yarn bases. Would you like to see me play around with more of these bases or other bases that they offer in the future? Please let me know down in the comments. It's always exciting for me to play around with different sources of yarn. I know that there's tons of different companies out there and I can't possibly review them all. But as part of my mission to make yarn dyeing accessible and approachable, it's really fun to step outside of some of my uh, standard uh, suppliers to play around with different brands and different products. Thank you so much for watching.